you gotta have it, guys. But they're contradicting what? themselves because if aren't dwarves diverse? Hi, this is Peyton with Girls Gone Right. And this is Megan. Welcome to our pop culture segment. Dun, well, dun, dun, dun. we are doing something a little different. Cue the Disney music. Not really, but <laughs> we are doing Disney princesses then and now. Wowza! So this is kind of in light of the Snow White leech photos that just came out. Leech. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. of course, the major flop that was The Little Mermaid. Uh, so we're going to go through four different Disney princesses that have been remade under the newest platform of Disney and the streaming services that they offer now. We're going to go through Jasmine, Belle, Ariel, and then talk a little bit about Snow White. But before we do that, Megan, who <gasps> who was your favorite Disney princess growing up? Jasmine. Jasmine. Yeah. Aww. I just always thought she was the prettiest one. Yeah. But she was also so girly and adventurous um, and not afraid to stand her ground. Yeah. But she also knew the respect of authority and such as her father. Yeah. She knew her father always knew best. Aw. Yeah. I love that. Mine was Little Mermaid because I thought it was so cool that she could just be in water all the time. Yeah. Like, what a fun life. You just get to swim. She wanted legs, though. <laughs> Well, That's I all wanted, she a, wanted I wanted a tail. <laughs> you wanted a tail. Yes. So before we dive in, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell. That way you get notified every time that we post a new video, whether it be one of these episodes or short. And follow us on Instagram and on TikTok and eventually Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. <laughs> We're really trying to uh, get through that security of uh, just trying to start the account. <laughs> Yeah, about that. Uh, at Girls Gone Right. Follow us. <laughs> All right. So let's start with Jasmine because she's my favorite. I'm just kidding. Uh, so a little history on Jasmine. So the story of Aladdin, if you've never seen it, <laughs> please go watch it. <laughs> Where have you been? Under a rock. Uh, the story of Aladdin takes place in the Middle Eastern city of Agrabah. And Jasmine is heavily influenced by Audrey Hepburn's oh, role. I didn't know that. Yes. There's a lot of history of these, these princesses that I did not know. Uh, heavily influenced by Audrey Hepburn's role as Princess Anne in Roman Holiday. Uh, Jasmine is the spirited daughter of the Sultan who has grown weary of her life in palace confinement. And despite an old age law, also known as tradition, that requires the princess to marry a prince in time, for her upcoming birthday, Jasmine in, is instead determined to marry someone she loves for who he is as opposed to what he owns. So she wants to marry for love. Her character was rewritten from a spoiled materialistic princess into a stronger and prominent heroine figure since the writers decided to nix Aladdin's mother from the story. So that's wow. very interesting. Her character has received mixed to positive reviews throughout the years and much of the skepticism being that her character's story didn't level up to the princesses who came before her. To me, that's irrelevant because Jasmine was not the main character of this movie. Aladdin was. Yeah. So comparing her to Ariel or Belle is dumb because they were the main characters. She's not the main character. Uh, she's the sixth Disney princess and the first non-European princess and first West Asian princess. Say princess one more time. <laughs> and because of that, she is credited with introducing racial diversity to the Disney princess lineup. Is she, so she's the first uh, DEI princess. Yeah. First POC princess. First diversity hire by <laughs> Disney. <laughs> yeah. So then... The 1992 animated movie. This movie was rated G. Its U.S. release was November 25th, 1992. It had a budget of $28 million. The U.S. box office, it made $217 million. Wow. I know that's pretty, pretty it's good. It's a pretty low budget, too. Well, it's only animated. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, the critic score is in 95%, and that is out of 78 reviews, and 92% audience score out of 250,000 plus ratings. It has very notable accolades. You will find as we go through these, there was no reason to remake any of these movies because they were perfect the way that they were. Yeah. See, this is what Disney did wrong. And this is yeah. why they are 
going through what they're going through now, which mm-hmm. is Bob Iger has put up FX, Freeform, National Geographic, ABC up for sale because they cannot handle the cancellations. I think they had millions and millions of subscribers drop the first quarter of this year, yeah. which is causing them to have to get rid of all their streaming services yeah. and possibly Disney. I think uh, what is allegedly happening is Iger is probably going to give Disney stream to Apple and sell it to them because they can no longer afford it because it's no longer an asset to the company because yeah. what they have done with their streaming services has put them just yeah. literally has dug the grave. It is their demise. Well, it used to be these types of movies were put in what they called the vault and it was a special release every so often that these mm-hmm. movies would come back out and you had the opportunity to buy like them. Like Lion it, King. But it was only for a, for a limited time. So the excitement for the movie came back and that's how they made a lot of money from these yeah. older animated movies. But now you you have it to the access of your fingertips to go watch it. Of mm-hmm. course, with a price, you have to pay. But obviously, if it's enough. there, why are we remaking it? Yeah, that's true. It's because they need a way to make more money. Like you said, they're already giving people access to it. They're not making any money because these movies yeah. suck. <laughs> yes. And this is the realization that Bob Iger has come to. Yeah. Is now they don't know what to do because it's no longer an asset to Disney. Yeah. So now they have to rid of their streaming services because it was such a failure. How embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. And it's a blockbuster. There are some embarrassing notes throughout throughout these that are pretty laughable. Um, so some, some notable accolades for the 1992 version of Aladdin, the original. It won the Academy Awards for Best Original Song and Best Original Score. Uh, the song was A Whole New World, but Friend Like Me was also nominated. It won Grammys for Song of the Year, Best Pop Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocals, Best Musical Album for Children, Best Instrumental Composition Written for a Motion Picture or for Television, Best Song Written Specifically for a Motion Picture or for Television. These are all for A Whole New World, but Friend Like Me was also nominated for the last category. So they're pretty damn perfect the way that they are. They need to remake it. The new, the 2000, so now the 2019 live action remake is rated PG because it has real people in it now. Uh, it was released May 24th, 2019, had a budget of $183 million. The U.S. box office did $355.6 million. The Rotten Tomatoes score, the critics score is a 57% out of 387 reviews. I think that these audience scores are inflated. I think they're fake. I'm sure. I'm sure they pay people to yes, I give think, them better reviews. I think that these are fake scores. The audience scores a 94%. And, the, and that's out of 50,000 plus ratings. Now, the original one, obviously the original has been out much longer. However, we didn't have an opportunity and the available opportunity to go and rate this on Rotten Tomatoes back in the day. But... It has a 92%. So you're telling me that the new one has a better audience score than the original. No, sorry. I think it's inflated. So let's get to Jasmine then and now. In the live action, we are told that the queen, Jasmine's mother, had been killed. And this is the reason Jasmine is kept locked up and protected. However, in the animated animation movie, it's merely because she's royalty. Okay. As a, Why do you think that is? I don't know. Like they just wanted, uh, I guess, to add a little bit more to her origin story. Yeah, and there's a few moments of feminism throughout these points, and that could be why. Like she lost her mother, yet she overcame that loss mm-hmm. of having a, a motherly figure in her life, and she's yeah. still a it's badass. Like frozen. Yeah, they've been doing this with a lot of princesses yeah. to make them the victim, but overcome mm-hmm. something. Yeah. As opposed to the 1992 film in the 2019 movie, Jasmine doesn't want to merely pick her own suitor. She wants to become the sultan of Agrabah. She gets turned down, and after that, she gets her own song, which is not in the original movie. So she wants to become the sultan. That is not tradition. Yeah. Again, Disney giving you these ideologies that you can stray away from tradition and it's okay because it is Dean Princess is doing it. Yeah. I have not watched any of the new ones. Yeah. Because 
I refuse. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't need to. I like the way it was. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> what I'll say about the Jasmine then and now, these this is the only one besides Belle that is very similar. Mm-hmm. The storyline it didn't change it. It that didn't much. change it that much. And this is like still one of the first. Not one of the first. I mean, it's one of the sooner live actions. Yeah. So they were probably testing it out. And if you look where it's coming Where we now, are in just four years. Which they've just completely changed the whole storyline yeah. to everything. Uh, they've obviously gotten more comfortable with changing stories. I think this was kind of a test to see, okay, let's change a little bit. Yeah. Let's see what we can do with a little bit. And then you give an inch and they take a mile. Yeah. So her storyline of being forced into marriage hasn't been touched in the adaptations throughout the years. So Jasmine is very much the same. As it it. should. Yeah, as it should be. Belle. I think she's my second favorite. Yeah, Yeah. I do love Belle. I love the story. I think they've remade it in a lot of formats. I think it's called the Beastly or something like that. Uh, Is that what it is? Yeah. With Vanessa Hudgens? Yeah. And that was one of my favorite movies because I think it's like the endearing part of the story, right? Like yeah. what it depicts what we all should feel about yeah. love is it doesn't matter what you look like, you fall in love with someone. And like, I think that was what people really like about yeah. the storyline is it's so it's different. It's a romance. It's yeah. a romantic it's film. so cute. Such a good one. It's, it's a fairy tale. So Belle is a book-loving daughter of an eccentric inventor inventor who yearns to abandon her predictable village life in return for adventure. Uh, The Disney chairman, Jeffrey Katzenberg, commissioned Beauty and the Beast as an animated musical with a strong heroine. Basing her on the heroine of the 1740 fairy tale of the same name, he hired screenwriter Linda Wolverton, and she adapted Belle into a more proactive character for the film, deliberately conceiving her as a feminist to reduce criticism Disney had long received for supposedly portraying female characters as victims. So as early as 1991, we were getting little doses at a time without even knowing it. Uh, Belle was inspired by the women's rights movement, gag, and actress Katherine Hepburn's performance in the film Little Women. Wolverton created Belle as a unique departure from previous Disney heroines, particularly The Little Mermaid's Ariel. However, some story artists often contested Wolverton's liberated version of the character. Of course they did. Because no little girl, no child is looking at the screen going, Mommy, she's such a feminist. (laughs) Really? Come on. Belle has garnered widespread acclaim from film critics who appreciated the character's bravery, intelligence, and independence. Yes. There is mixed reception towards her feminism, of course, with commentators accusing the character's actions of being romance-oriented because (gasps) that is just a travesty. We can't have that in a fairy tale. No. Never. Where's the me to self-love? God. As the fifth Disney princess, she is often ranked amongst among the franchise's best members. This is a high gag alert, guys. Highly regarded as one of Disney's strongest examples of a feminist character, critics agree that Belle helped spearhead a generation of independent film heroines while changing the reputation of a Disney princess. Mm. It's so funny because the fairy tale is exactly that. You meet a Prince Charming. Make believe. You fall in love. You have your happily ever after. And there's some things about the fairy tale that is exactly like it's supposed to be. Meet a man, fall in love, happily ever after. It's make believe. Yeah. That's why it's a fairy tale is make believe. So why are we trying to be more realistic? Yeah. And let let people live. People use their imagination. We're children. They should be using their imagination. This is geared towards children. Yes. We're not trying to raise a mafia of angry (laughs) feminists. (laughs) Well, they are now. (laughs) Uh, This is a fun fact. Earlier sketches of Belle were described as being too beautiful. And they were adjusted early on to make her look less glamorous and more relatable. Paige O'Hara, who's the actress who voiced Bill in the 1991 animated film, described the earlier sketches as looking like Angelina Jolie. I can see that. Yeah, in the face. Yeah. In the face. 
Okay, then the 1991 movie, animated, rated G. U.S. release is November 13th, 1991, at a budget of $25 million, very close to the Aladdin budget. Uh, box office did $219 million. Rotten Tomatoes critics score 93% out of 121 reviews, 92% audience score with 250 plus, 250,000 plus ratings. Notable accolades. Academy Awards for Best Original Score and Best Original Song for Beauty and the Beast. Be Our Guest was also nominated. Grammys, basically everything that Aladdin won for, this one also did too. <laughs> and it was uh, Best Pop Performance by a Duo or Group. That was the version with Celine Dion and Peebo Bryson. Um, let's see. Yeah, all these were nominated for the song Beauty and the Beast. And then of course it won Best Album for Children. Now, the two, the 2017 live action remake rated PG. You, uh, the U.S. release date, March 17, 2017. Budget, it wasn't clear. It was said 160 to $255 million. Whew. So let me say this too. Actually, I'll save that. I'll save that for Little Mermaid. So remind me. The U.S. box office was $504 million. Rotten Tomatoes, 71% critic score. Th that's out of 384 reviews. And the audience score is 80% with 50,000 plus ratings. Um, I actually watched this one. Oh, you did. I did. I actually saw this in theaters. Um, I'm, I'm honestly surprised at the score because I thought they did a, a, a good job with this one. Yeah, I actually did hear a lot of good things about this one. I, I thought they did. I think these were too harsh of a score. I think they were they were aiming, their bar was set too high, I think, going in to review it. Um, I thought Emma Watson did a great job. Uh, the 1991 Bell versus 2017 Bell. Uh, there must be more to this provincial life. That's what Bell sings at the beginning of both movies. The animated villagers couldn't understand the most peculiar mademoiselle because of her affinity for books. Yet the live action version sees Belle not only feeding her own knowledge, but also opting to share that knowledge with others as well. So the classic opening scene now has those villagers who are much more diverse, by the way, <laughs> uh, scowling at her for using a makeshift washing machine and teaching others like young girls how to read because, oh, who needs to read? Whatever. Uh, animated Belle offers to take her father's place in the Beast prison, a decision he accepts over Maurice's objections. That exchange is made without anyone's permission in the newer movie. Belle cleverly gets the Beast to open the cell door and she sneaks inside and shuts the door, allowing her father to escape. Um, Emma Watson in an interview with Good Morning America said... She's a little different speaking to the tweaks in Belle towards empowerment. She said, I think we had a little bit more space and more room to tell a bit more of Belle's story in this one. I hope she's a slightly more modern version. She was updated a little bit, but she was pretty progressive in her DNA, really. She was a bit rebellious of, as a Disney princess. But why? <laughs> Emma Watson is is very progressive. As woke as it goes. Very progressive. Um, again, I don't understand why the need to push for feminism in a child's film. Yeah. I don't I don't get of it. Of course, because we have to indoctrinate at a young age. Honestly, were you thinking when you watched these movies, were you thinking I want to be as strong and independent as Belle? Or were you thinking I want a yellow gown. Yeah, I was, <laughs> it was, I, you watch these movies and you look at the fairy tale aspect of the yeah. castle and the Prince the music, Charming. The songs. Yes, it's all about that. Like to me, when I went to Disney World, I was so excited because you see all these you things see the and it's like, ah, I feel like a princess. Yes. And being a princess isn't about these feelings of fem like just because I feel like a feminist doesn't mean no. I feel like a princess no you want like the gown and you want the prince charming I think the storyline is not about 
that. It's no. it's about falling in love and finding your yes. prince charming. And and the story and the itself, morale and the character. The story itself is so beautiful. I mean, she's he's on a time crunch. If that rose falls apart, that last petal falls, he's stuck that way. Mm-hmm. And when she figures that out, it's heartbreaking because she wants him to live a happy life. And then she ends up falling in love with him. I mean, it doesn't matter what he looks like. Like, we all want that. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's about showing how you should love someone. Yeah. And that's what these Disney, Disney movies should be conveying. Yes. That's, that's the main part of the True story. True love. True love. Not feminism. Yeah. All right, Ariel. Your favorite. This is my favorite. <laughs> this is my girl. That's your girl. She's the fourth Disney princess. She's the youngest daughter to King Triton and Queen Athena of an underwater kingdom of merfolk. <laughs> How cool would it be, guys, to just be a mermaid and to be swimming underwater all day? I mean, you can rent a fin. Oh my gosh, that just sounds like she's living the dream. Let's go to a I, magical I love Mediterranean the island. I love to just like swim. And so when I think of Little Mermaid, I'm like, she's just got it made. <laughs> she can just swim all day. She gets to wear cute little seashells. Like, yes. She has the gorgeous red hair. Like, that's my kind of princess. Yes. So she's characterized as rebellious uh, and longs to be a part of the human world. Her character is based on the title card. No, you won't like it here. (laughs) No, sorry. Honey, go back. Under the seas where it's at. Go back down. (laughs) Her character is based on the title character of the Hans Christian Andersen 1837 fairy tale of the same name, but was developed into a different personality for the 1989 film adaptation. It's a good year. (laughs) over in that year. Jody Benson, who voices Ariel in the 1989 movie, was known for being a stage actress, but she was chosen for the role because the directors felt it was important to have the same voice singing and doing the speaking. Um, and her voice, they described it as being sweet and youthful. Yeah. Yeah. And you totally hear her voice and know that it's Ariel. Uh, the animation was inspired by a number of sources, but most recognizably being Christy Brinkley, which was a surprise to me. I'm sure you don't know who that is. Nope. (laughs) She was a supermodel in the 80s. The movement of Ariel's hair underwater was based on footage of astronaut Sally Ride, who was the first American woman to fly to space in 1983. Uh, Her hair color was a subject of dispute between the filmmakers and studio executives. They wanted her to be blonde. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, that would have just... It ruined it. It's the purple clams, the green tail, and the red hair. So... And the blue water, just all pops. It was noted that the red hair contrasted Mm -hmm. better with her the color green of her tail. And... Yeah, that's so true. And I also think that one of the reasons why I liked Little Mermaid so much is because it was so vivid. It was very vivid. The underwater world and the characters. Like you can go to Disney World and go to like the aerial parts and it's so vivid. It's so colorful. And that's what you think of deep water. You think of like coral reefs. It's so beautiful. And And for children, like that's what it's about. It's about like how the movie's made, the music, the sound, the colors, all of it. Yes. Um, Not about the toxic ideology. Yeah. Another reason why her hair color was a dispute was because Disney's live action branch Touchstone Pictures, they recently released Splash, which stars Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah and Daryl Hannah's hair and that color was, her hair color in that movie was blonde. So they were like, let's keep it red. And I'm so glad they did. All right. Then the 1989 animated movie, rated G. U.S. release was November 15th, 1989. Had a budget of $40 million. Uh, U.S. box office did $109.9 million. Rotten Tomatoes. Critic score, 92% with 74 reviews. Audience score, 88% out of 250,000 plus ratings. Uh, Academy Awards, best original score, best original song for Under the Sea. Kiss the Girl was also nominated. I prefer that one, actually. That is my favorite song. I love Kiss the Girl. <laughs> so good. Uh, Grammys, best recording for children, best song written specifically for motion picture uh, under the sea one. Kiss the Girl was also nominated. 
I like Kiss the Girl more than that one. I love Under the Sea, but I love yeah. Kiss the Girl. It's such a sweet song. Clip that. <laughs> All right, now. Mm. So what I was going to say about the box office. So first, it's rated PG. It was released this year, May 26, 2023. It had a budget of $250 million. A lot of money, guys. The box office made $294 million. This is such a small profit for the amount of work that went into creating a movie like this, how much they put into it. This is not worth it, guys. They lost money. So you have to consider in, this is just ticket sales. Oh. This is not marketing Oh yeah, the yeah. marketing and all of the uh, so assets they that go lost out to make this money. Wow, from this movie, as they should, as they should have. But this is like such an L. I think this is when Disney they did it, and people were like, "Go woke, go broke." Yep, and they should have learned from this. And they didn't. They keep pushing it, and I think they know that they're going to keep losing money. But I think they want. The culture war is more important to them to be on the wrong side and make a point. And they're fine with losing all this money. <laughs> well, obviously it's hurting them enough now and they're realizing it. Yeah. So again, I think these audience scores are inflated. I think people were like, no, we need to- Yeah, because there's no way there. that they this movie tanked and people actually liked it. If it was actually a good movie, it starts buzz, people talk about it and they go see it again. Yeah. Other people start going. That didn't happen with this movie. Nope. They could barely get people in there in the first place. No. I'm sorry. When you do something as significant as changing uh, a character's race, which yeah. these Disney princesses, it's like their heritage. You're changing their heritage, which is inherently racist. Yes. Disney's racist. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. This is this is racist when you are changing someone's heritage to fit a narrative that you want because you don't like what color they are. That's racist. Yeah, I agree. And also, if if we're so concerned about putting a black princess out there, hello, Tiana. Yeah, we have a princess black, and the frog. We have a black. Why princess. not remake that one? No. I love Tiana. No, we have to make everyone black now. I love the princess and the frog. Why Girl. not do that one? Because if it's not black, it's racist. God. Okay, so the critic score is 66%. This is out of 322 reviews. Audience score inflated at a big 94%, which I have a very hard time believing. That's out of 10,000 plus ratings. Um, then, so we're doing 1989 versus the 2023. Obviously, most notably... The difference in, in race. Um, this is hilarious. <laughs> An article from The Guardian states that the new adaptation was a giant flop in China. Some have blamed, the quote says, some have blamed racism for the flop. A racially charged backlash in the West followed the announcement in 2019 that Bailey, the actress that plays Ariel, an African-American actor, was to take the lead role of Ariel and appeared last month to be joined by the Chinese state media tabloid, The Global Times, known for fanning the flames of Western culture wars when it, was, when it published an article accusing Disney of forced inclusion of minorities and lazy and irresponsible storytelling. In Hong Kong, the movie made $634,000 in its opening. Terrible. That's embarrassing. Horrible. But it just goes to show America's weak, y'all. We People still went and did it. We are people the, in China just didn't want it at all. We're the only ones doing this. They're laughing at us. They've you know been why? laughing at us. It's because they have tradition. We are so confused mm -hmm. by the traditions that we have. So we're, we're like, uh, the only traditions that we have are to love our country and to and to be patriotic, and that's wrong. We can't do that. Yeah, now if you if you are a patriot, you're a domestic terrorist. Yes, you are labeled as a if white you wear supremacist. Blue jeans and cowboy boots, you're a terrorist. You're a white supremacist. <laughs> Your country accent's cute. You try real hard. <laughs> I try real hard. I'm from Michigan, y'all. <laughs> I'm from Alabama, so I got it now real good. Oh, guys, that girl that faked her kidnap, 
It's from, oh it's my, from my hometown. No way. <laughs> that honestly was reading that story. I was like, wow, that's so tragic. And then it turns out it's oh, fake. Fake you know, news. It's funny. I didn't believe a single second of it. Oh, I, I did. I did not believe. I was like, this is too, this is too far. There was this no shit toddler. This shit doesn't Screw happen. This freaking lady. She should go to jail. She's going to go to jail. Good. Yeah. Okay. Don't feel anyway. bad. <laughs> okay. In the animated version, Eric quickly falls in love with Ariel after she saves him from drowning and she sings to him. Uh, well, that wasn't a good enough progressive narrative for the 2023 adaptation. In the new film, Ariel falls for Eric for his sense of wonder because he too feels like an outsider due to being adopted by his parents. Wah. Wah. <laughs> <laughs> In the 2023 version, Ursula throws another wrench into the spell she casts on Ariel. It's not just her voice that's gone. She keeps forgetting that she falls in love with Eric and you can hear her still singing in her head. This is so weird. That's lame. That's yeah. so lame. In the original, Ariel was too much of a damsel in distress. So they had to change the ending. So instead of Eric ramming the ship into Ursula and killing her, to add more feminism to the film, which is made for children, by the way. Eric is now the damsel in distress. Oh. Er Ariel steers the ship and stabs Ursula herself while yeah, rescuing she her had beloved. To do it herself because you don't need no man. No need no man. Disney said, "No, we don't need him." God. In the original, Ariel's sisters were all white. So was she. But in the new one, her sisters are of varied ethnicities. Well, guess what? They're your half sisters. <laughs> they yeah. your full sisters. Yeah. Well, little different. A sister from another mister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how can you have... Sister, they're not, they're not blood related mister. if you're not all the same, right? I guess. So those are the differences between then and now and Ariel. So what we know about Snow White. This is such big controversy. And I think, honestly, this is going to put Disney in the freaking hole. I think that this is going to go straight to streaming. I don't even think it's going to see a theatrical release. That's even going to be there. I don't know if they're even going to have streaming. I think really this is going to be the end of Disney. I think Disney Plus will will be around when this movie comes out, but I think yeah. that it's going to go straight to streaming and it will not see a theatrical release just because no. of this. And people are already pissed off about what's yeah. happening with this movie. So the original Snow White was released in February 4th, 1938. And she was the very first Disney princess. So this is a big deal that they're remaking this. Um, she's also the first fictional character to get a star on the Hollywood walk of, walk of fame. I almost said walk of shame. <laughs> Should be the walk of shame now. Um, she's known for her skin being as white and pure as snow and being the fairest of them all. Mm -hmm. Fair, meaning white. skin complexion <laughs> meaning and white. pure. Meaning snow white. It's literally in her name, her race. Yeah. Not saying that the white race, I'm not quoting, you know who from Nazi Germany. I'm saying that yeah. the purity of her character and, and her heart is what made her the fairest of them all. But it was also in her skin complexion. It's just, it's just the freaking storyline. It's just the story. And it's okay. Like, I'm sorry. I thought if we weren't racist, we don't see race. So why does it, we have to make them black? Yeah. That's racist. The fact that you felt the need to go ahead and, and change a race that's in a traditional princess story, that is inherently racist. And what they're doing with Rachel Zegler. Yeah. So here's my hot take. I don't freaking care that she's the Disney princess. She's pretty. She's a pretty white looking she, Disney she, princess. Yeah. I have, she looks, she is a natural Latina. She looks tan when she's out in the sun. And when she's not, she looks very white. Yeah. So I have no problem with her being the princess. I don't, this doesn't piss me off as much as the Little Mermaid one because yeah. that was inherently wrong. This one, sure. You know what? I'll give it to Rachel. She's a great actress. She looks, she does resemble Snow White. She looks I, cute in the costume. Yeah, she looks so cute. And like, also she has, she does have pretty fair skin when she's not tan. So sure, she fits the role. I think she actually does have a lot of similarities. Here's the issue that I have with this movie is there's no Prince Charming. There's not? They took him right out. 
There's no Prince Charming in this. I didn't There's even know that. six dudes that are all diverse and they're not midgets. They're not short. They're, they're, not, they're so, grown ass men. Yeah, so the dwarves the are dwarf? not dwarves. They are. They have been changed to magical creatures. Magical creatures of all different shapes and sizes. Ethnicities, and no genders. Prince, no Prince Charming. Allegedly, they took out Prince Charming and that's the beef that I have. You know what? You can change the race. I don't care that Rachel Ziegler's a Latina. That's not my beef with this movie. Sure, whatever. Take that one. But my beef is that you change the whole freaking storyline story yeah. to make it about a freaking feminist. So what really sparked the outrage recently was leaked photos. But prior to this, Peter Dinklage, who is a dwarf and he was known, he's best known for Game of Thrones. He spoke out when news broke of the live action Snow White being made. Uh, and he went on Mark Maron's WTF podcast. And he said, quote, literally no offense to anything, but I was sort of taken back. They were very proud to cast a Latino actress as Snow White, but you're still telling the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Yes. Uh, take a step back and look at what you're doing there. It makes no sense to me. You're progressive in one way, but you're still making that effing back backwards story about Seven Dwarves living in a cave together. They live in a house together. Have it, have I done nothing to advance the cause from my soapbox? I guess I'm not loud enough. So this now, because of the photos that were leaked by the Daily Mail, where we see regular old people, not dwarves, has caused backlash in the dwarf community because these could have been seven roles given to seven dwarves in need of an acting job and that they could have had an opportunity to be in a major production and yeah. it was taken from them all because of that stupid comment. All because of diversity. We gotta have it, guys. But they're contradicting what? themselves because if aren't dwarves diverse? Well, they're <laughs> like, we can't, we cannot just do that because we have to do the opposite of whatever it is. If we did whatever it is, it's racist or it's bigotry or we just have to make it different and include everyone. If we make it just dwarfs and it's not inclusive because we need to make sure it's open to everyone. And so Disney is digging its freaking grave, guys. This is this is going to be it for it. I'm, I'm calling it now. No one's going to watch this shit. No. Well, it's, you know, the Mandalorian was great the first season. The second and season- And then they kept it going. It was good. And then they fired Gina Carano mm -hmm. and that's when shit hit the fan. Yeah. They've been doing this repeatedly with Willow, Tanked, a series that no one has probably heard of because it did so horribly. Well, I watched the original movie. It was, no. I used to watch that as a kid. But the stream- But I never watched tanked. the show. I didn't they, watch the show. I think Willow had the lowest ratings ever on Disney streaming. They've had a lot of big- Els, She-Hulk. She-Hulk was a disaster. Tanks. Disney is digging their grave by doing all of these things. They're ruining everything. Don't get me started on the Marvel stuff. They released a trailer from the Marvels today and it looks like a feminist clusterfuck. Disney's done for, guys. This is just, I'm. it's gone too far. People yeah. are not going to be okay with this. People have stopped watching. We can see that in the numbers throughout the past. And now we can see Bob Iger... But there was a tape release in a meeting. He accidentally said in an interview that he was selling this and it wasn't supposed to get leaked like that. Whoopsie. And it did. Whoops. <laughs> accidentally said that he had, they were putting up for sale part of their company, which is huge because they literally acquired this, hired so many people and these people are about to lose their jobs. I think they're just falling apart at the seams because- yes. They don't know how to do undo what they've done because no. they have ruined the Disney magic. They've ruined the Disney magic they're ruining the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They're ruining Star Wars. They're, I mean, you've acquired these iconic lineups and you're ruining them with your political agendas. Yeah. it Stop. And here's the thing. I don't care. I don't care that Snow White is Snow Brown and that she's Latina. I don't care that she's diverse. Like, sure, whatever. As long as she plays the part but, well. I don't yeah, care. As long as she plays the part well and... That's fine. But here's the thing. You don't have to put politics in entertainment. You can no. just leave it in entertainment. I don't care what you believe in. Just stop putting it in the freaking films. Yeah. And honestly, like that's my point of view is like you can be an entertainer. You can be Taylor Swift and be the most liberal person ever. Just 
don't be putting that on blast when I'm trying to watch the entertainment. That's not what I'm here for. Specifically this kind of content, because this is content being fed directly to children. Children, which is what they are after. And if this yes. doesn't prove it, I don't know what else will. Yeah. This Sound of Freedom, all of these things that are being heightened in culture right mm. now is a direct, a, it, it just shows that they are attacking children and especially what they did in California with that law. Yeah. It, this is just enough pure proof. Enough people were so outraged after seeing the Sound of Freedom that California backtracked and they made that penalty for child sex trafficking and child mm. rape. The penalty is higher now. Um but to fall back on the fact that Disney is is literally busting at the seams now and they are falling apart. They climbed so far to the top by acquiring Star Wars, George Lucas Films, Marvel Cinematic Universe, Marvel Studios. Following the leaked photos by the Daily Mail, the Disney spokes, spokesperson informed the Daily Beast that the photos are fake and not from our production. This is a quote. We are currently trying to have the Daily Mail issue a correction. Disney then backtracked and said the images that ran in the Daily Mail are not official film photos. These show stand-ins for some talent. So they cut, They tried to claim that the photos were fake and then they're like, oh. Well, they're going to see it anyways. Well, I guess they're not. So this just goes to show you they're falling apart and it's because of the content and the production that they're putting out. It's a bad day to be Disney. No one wants to see this crap. People just want their good old fashioned fairy tale storytelling. Yeah. That's it. I understand we must change with the times. Not this much. Not this much. You change wrong. You're forcing change. Make people it, don't want this. Make it a gradual evolution. If people wanted this, you would be seeing different numbers and you wouldn't have to be selling your streaming service. Yeah. <laughs> the original content that they're putting out, tanking. Mm-hmm. Tanking. What was that stupid movie they just released? The animated movie? The- oh, the kids that... I, didn't even, I don't even know what it's called. No one knows what it's called because it's no one so watched bad. it. No one's going. No one's reviewing it because they don't care because no one's watching it. And if people wanted it, the numbers would show differently and they don't. No one cares. No <laughs> one wants it. No one cares. Stop making the crap. Stop putting the crap in there. Yeah. We're done with it. So guys, We're done with you, Disney. Yeah. <laughs> Don't watch Disney. Go see anything else. Yeah. Ban, uh, boycott Disney. Stop watching their crap. Yeah. And yeah, hopefully we won't have to see another one of these woke live action remakes again. Yeah. Comment below with who your favorite Disney princess is <laughs> and what differences you've seen throughout the years. And maybe we'll do a follow up. Yeah. Who knows? Well, that was our pop culture segment, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, comment below with any of your thoughts from what we discussed. And we look forward to seeing you in the next one. See you next time. Bye.